Hello, Moritz here and welcome to my new channel. Today we are going to take a look at the Hentec MSO 5102D 2-channel digital storage oscilloscope. So let's open up the box and see what's inside. What we get is a power cable, a rather thin manual, so let's get rid of that. Not one, but two separately packed probes with their own accessories a USB type A to type B cable, a pack of probes for the digital channels, the corresponding cable that goes along with those, and the oscilloscope itself. So let me remove the packing material for you and we will get a bit closer to go over its features in detail. Starting from the bottom left there is a power button, a USB port where you can connect a USB drive for software updates and data storage, and something like an old LPT printer port for those 16 digital channels. Then there are two BNCs for the first and the second analog channel and a third BNC for an external trigger. In the middle are seven menu buttons. Each of the two analog channels has a volts per division knob, a vertical offset knob and a menu button. Next to them are the horizontal settings containing a horizontal offset knob for the trigger as well as the time per division knob and the horizontal menu button. At the top you can find some more general menu buttons and stretching from the top right down to the bottom right are the trigger settings. On the back of the scope is another USB port. With that you can connect the scope to a PC and share its screen as well as control it remotely. Then over to the right side there is a power connection. So let's turn it on. I hooked up the power cable and now we can turn it on. It takes a little while to boot. And there it is. But we'll give it a few more seconds. As you can see channel 1 is already activated. Since the scope has a 1 kHz square wave test signal which is also used for calibrating your probes, I will get one of them so we can see that signal. First, we need to connect one end of the probe to the BNC. Then we got our ground and the probe connection on the other side. The ground of the probe goes to the ground of the test signal and the probe connects to the signal itself. So there we see the test signal. Because I'm lazy, I'll press the auto set button and the scope will try to find the best way to display the signal. But we can also center it manually and decrease the volts per division to get a better view of the signal. We can also zoom in horizontally by changing the time per division to up to 8 nanoseconds. But as you can see this is far too fast for the signal. Let me zoom out again and we can take a look at some other signals, like the ones my component tester can generate. Oh wait, before we can do that I have to solder on a new cable for the 9V block battery because I stole that for another project. Here it is, and I also attached some wires to it to make it easier to connect it to the probe. First we connect the ground wire and then the signal wire. Let me also connect the battery and then hold down the selection button. Now we can select between the frequency generator or the PWM generator. So let's go with the PWM generator first. For convenience I will just hit the auto set. And there's our PWM signal with a pulse width of 10%. Let's increase it a little bit. As I increase it, you can see the change on the scope. Let's go 400%. Now we will try the frequency generator. And currently it is generating a signal of 1000 kHz, like the test signal of the scope. In the right corner of the display you can see the frequency the scope measured and that is 1 MHz. 
So let's zoom in on the time base to see the signal much clearer. We can also increase the frequency to 2 MHz or decrease it to 1 Hz. After all this fooling around, here are some more impressions. The MSO5102D features a 7-inch color LCD. It has a bandwidth of 100 MHz and a sampling rate of up to 1 giga samples per second. Its record length of 1 MB is rather poor, but it provides several different measurement functions. The time base can be adjusted from 8 nanoseconds up to 40 seconds per division in a 248 sequence. For the analog channels, the vertical division goes from 2 millivolts up to 100 volts. That's it for this video. In the next one, I'm going to show you how you can increase the bandwidth of the scope from 100 megahertz to 200 megahertz. So if you like this video and want to see more, give it a thumbs up, share and subscribe to this channel. Bye!